But can you, have you ever understood why people want to be so rich? We all want to be able to have a better bottle of wine, or we all want to have a nice car, or maybe a slightly bigger house. But mm. I think the point of being very rich is to be able to tell people that you are very rich. Yes, you essentially. Agree? I think it is a display. It's very fashionable these days to look into genetics and ancestry and yeah. to picture our ancestors in a cave or in a field or, you know, hunting and gathering. And we, we know that the, some, some part of being human is acquisition, is territorial acquisition. And whether it's land, building a castle like yeah. this, as a display as well as a defence. And money is a defence as well as display. It protects you from everything in the world. It as does, a castle but the, does. why such huge sums of it? I don't know. I suppose when you get a huge sum... Are they sum, competitive with yes, each you other? Yes, that's the point I was going to say. Yeah. You join a sort of club in which, uh, you know, people in the suburbs might say, they've got a better lawnmower than I have. I'm, I'm <laughs> yes. going to have to upgrade my lawnmower. Yeah. I'm going to have to upgrade my strimmer uh, and, and all the sort of suburbia things, keeping up with the Joneses, we call it. It's a very, we've talked about that all our lives. We know it as a yeah. phenomenon. But you scale it up. That's, you simply scale it up. And, and we know this is true. I mean, I can still picture the moment when I was nine and I found an old Macintosh, an old raincoat. People used to wear them. Yeah, yeah. And it had a 10-shilling note in it. <laughs> and the joy, yeah. the absolute joy. Yeah. Now, what you can't do is scale that joy up. If, no, I, if, right. if I then found £100,000 in a coat, I would be astonished. Yeah. <laughs> and I would go, wow. But I wouldn't be... Um, well, 10 shillings is, you know, half a pound, so I wouldn't be 200,000 times happier no. than when I found that £10 note. But people think it's but, more is better, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they do, absolutely. I mean, al al alcoholics think more is better. Yeah, yeah. But there are many aspects of humanity where we are bound, if we're honest, to inspect ourselves, to say, I get that, I feel like that. Yeah. But also, I don't feel like that. I've always been very lucky with alcohol, for example. I do like a drink, I like wine, yeah. but I know I could never be an alcoholic. I just don't like it enough. Yeah. I don't like feeling sick. I don't no. like having to cope with the <laughs> responsibility of apologising the next day <laughs> if I've been drunk. I don't like the fact that I might get a bit argumentative. And, and so I just, you know, could never be an alcoholic, but I could be lots of other things that I, yeah. I do recognise faults in. And similarly, with money. I mean, I like having yeah. enough money I'll be honest, but to turn left that. on an aeroplane. I think it's yeah. the most... I still get excited by it. I still think, oh, my goodness, <laughs> I'm going first class. And I love it. I mean, I yeah. just love it. And it's a disgrace, and I know I shouldn't, and, and I but try and do this awful the key word carbon offsetting and all you the other You the nonsense. key word, enough. Yeah. Enough, exactly, a sense of enough. So these very rich people have no sense of enough. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, do you understand it? I mean, it's an illness, isn't it? It is an illness. And I, 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 I wrote an, a sort of autobiography about myself which tried to address my propensity to overdo things myself, but not, uh. not in money terms. But I noticed that from the... I was the same... I was at what we... You know, this awful what? generational wars, you know, you say baby boomer and millennial, yeah. and I just want to throw up when I hear all this... About. I'm sort of what late a, imperialist. Or what exactly? Yeah. I mean, it just it seems so weird. But anyway, uh, I am a baby boomer in the technical sense. And so I was born in the same year as Sugar Puffs, the cereal. <laughs> right? So <laughs> I, I should never forget. Yeah, that. I was of a generation <laughs> for whom television advertising was first directed towards me when uh, I was young to eat Sugar Puffs and Ricicles and Frosties and sugary things. Yeah. And, uh, and I went to a school which had a tuck shop, you know, a little oh, boarding yeah. school, and there were things like sherbet fountains with sherbet in it, <laughs> like white powder that you, 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 you sucked in through a licorice straw. And, um, <laughs> and they even extraordinarily had Spanish galleon rolling tobacco, which was coconut shreds, but it was done exactly like a rolling tobacco packet that you'd see... <laughs> you'd see grown-ups using, and you would have a pipe made of licorice, uh, uh, and you would have cigarettes with red tips on the end, which were candy cigarettes. And you remember all these sweets. Well, you're probably a generation older, you didn't have 
quite oh, no, those. there was a tuck but shop. They were, so yeah. you were being prepared for cocaine and tobacco. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> you were given white powder and tobacco, and I never could eat enough of that. And I would break out of school, school bounds, go to the village shop and buy all the fruit salads and blackjacks and foamy shrimps and uh, little rice paper flying sauces, and I'd stuff myself. In. I couldn't eat them enough. I got, I got teeth missing here because of it. And then when I was a teenager, there was still... So I, I had this empty hole in me, this vast empty hole that said, feed me. I need this sugar. Ah, I need ah. it. And then when it wasn't sugar, it became tobacco. And I smoked. Ah. And then in my 20s, it became cocaine. It became yeah. that. I just... And I couldn't sit still without going... <sighs> you know? And, and it's that addictive impulse that many people, many people watching will know what I mean, I, and many people won't. Because this is the important thing to remember. As I said, not everybody has this. And it's a kind of addictive gene. And I guess the money people have it for money. There's this hole in them. They have to acquire yes, and they have to right. own. And um, they don't know how to fill it. No. And no. they think, if I had another 500 million, I'd be happier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>